What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and recently I received a comment where someone basically asked the following question. Which enclosure is most suited for my speaker driver? So in this clip we are not going to do any designing, any building, we are just going to answer someone's question and hopefully it will clear some things up for others as well. First of all, I would like you to know that I read the comments and try to answer all of them. I encourage you to ask questions as it might give me an idea for a future video or for some interesting audio project. Also don't forget to subscribe because for some reason only 9% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. Now let's get back to our topic. We have a speaker driver and we need to build an enclosure for it. Or you can think it the other way around. I want to build specifically a bass reflex enclosure. Which driver should I pick to best suit this type of speaker box? Problem is, there are many enclosure types out there, but we are going to split them into three types. So we are going to split them into sealed, bass reflex, and infinite baffle. We all know these types of enclosures. Sealed is a closed box, base reflex is the ported enclosure, and uh, infinite baffle, well, we, you will have to get creative with this one because the theory kind of points out to something non-existent. So let's give up uh, some uh, possible scenarios of uh, infinite baffle. Mm, a ceiling speaker is uh, basically an infinite baffle. A speaker on a rear parcel shelf of a car is an infinite baffle or something that plays in an oversized sealed box is still an infinite baffle where the air inside the box doesn't damp the speaker in any way. Now you are probably going to protest that there are many more box types out there. Well, yeah, but luckily they will share some of their characteristics with these ones. So for example, what will work in a sealed box will also work in a four-order bandpass. What will work in a bass reflex will also work in a six-order bandpass or passive radiator enclosure. And what will work in an infinite baffle will also work in an open baffle. So let's start this with a practical example. Let's pick some random driver and check it out. I picked a 12-inch SB Acoustics subwoofer. And of course, we are going to check out the parameter list. And now you see this big list of parameters and get intimidated, but actually we're interested in the Thiel small parameters, which are only three, FS, QTS, and VAS. The rest of the parameters are mechanical, physical, electrical parameters, etc. So let's talk about these parameters. FS is the resonant frequency and it's measured in hertz. Typically for a subwoofer, the lower the number, the better. Why? because a speaker will happily play above its resonant frequency and of course at the precise point of resonance, in this case 22 Hz. But if you ask this speaker to play below 22 Hz, it will start to have a hard time and the response will start to get progressively worse starting with uh, 22 and downward. Does this help us in choosing our enclosure type? Of course! Let's say that the resonant frequency wasn't 22 Hz because that is pretty low and it will work well in uh, most enclosures. Let's say it was 40 Hz. If you place this into a sealed enclosure, the resonant frequency will go up, more or less depending on how large the enclosure is. So I have a 40 Hz free air resonance. Now I place the speaker in a sealed box. The resonant frequency has gone up to, let's say, 50 Hz. I'm just giving random numbers just to prove, to prove a point, don't take these calculations as facts. So in this case, um, if I want this box to play at 20 Hz, I'm going to be really disappointed. However, if I choose a bass reflex box, I can extend the playable frequency range of this subwoofer by tuning the port to a resonant frequency below the resonant frequency of the speaker. So uh, if the speaker has an FS of 40 Hz, I can tune the box to 30 Hz and now when the response of the speaker starts to roll off, the port will pick up the pace and now the box can play much lower. 
In an infinite baffle, the speaker basically pa plays in free air, so the resonant frequency is not affected. What conclusion can I draw from this parameter? If you want to build a sealed box, you should make sure that your speaker has a low free air resonant frequency so it can play even the lowest notes. This SB Acoustics driver is a nice candidate, although there are speakers with lower than 20 Hz resonant frequency. Remember that uh, when you place it inside the box, the resonant frequency will go up. For bass reflex, we have more flexibility when it comes to this parameter. Now let's move on. I'm going to skip QTS for now because that is the parameter which will mainly dictate which enclosure type you should choose. And let's focus on VAS. VAS is a difficult parameter to explain, it's the equivalent compliance of the speaker measured in units of volume, and I'm not going to go into detail, but rather tell you what to look for. Mainly this parameter will give us some information on how large the enclosure will be. You will find VAS measured in liters or cubic feet. In this case we have 205 liters. This is a big VAS number and does tell me that the enclosure won't be that small. However, VAS doesn't tell the whole story, so even if VAS is 200 liters, if QTS is a favorable number, then a properly designed box can be as little as 50 liters. As a result, don't judge the enclosure requirements on VAS alone. But anyway, if you look at the VAS and it's 200-300 liters, then most of the time the box will be at least 100 liters. Now let's switch to QTS. Q stands for quality factor or damping factor. T stands for total because we have two Qs, one electrical and one mechanical, and the QTS is a combination of these two. And S stands for speaker, so total Q of the speaker. QTS does not have a unit of measurement, and again, I'm not going to go into details about these parameters, but I'm going to tell you how to interpret the numbers. Let's start with the sealed box. When you put a speaker in a sealed box, the QTS parameter transforms into QTC. C stands for closed box, because now the air inside the box acts like a spring and contributes to the overall damping factor. So let's say you put this speaker in a huge box. Since there is so much air inside the box, it doesn't have any spring effect, so in this case QTS is equal to QTC. As we make the box smaller and smaller, the air inside the box will contribute to the damping factor, and QTC will start to rise. The number we aim for is QTC of 0.707, also called the Butterworth alignment. This will translate into a maximally flat response. Right away we can draw a conclusion, a speaker with a QTS of over 0.7 is not good for a sealed enclosure. Why? Because you cannot design it according to the Butterworth response. QTC can only go up after you place it inside a box. That's why some people ask me, hey, I have this speaker and I want a QTC of 0.7, just like you told me, but I keep getting a negative number for my enclosure. What did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong, your speaker simply cannot achieve that response characteristics. In my opinion, any driver with a QTS between 0.4 and 0.7 will work well in a sealed box. Now let's move on to a base reflex enclosure. Here is a bit tricky to make analogies, but guess what, we also have this Butterworth alignment for ported enclosure as well. This alignment is possible for speakers with QTS between 0.1 and 0.41. This doesn't mean that you can't design a ported enclosure for a speaker with a QTS of 0.5, for example. You can, but it will not have that perfectly flat response. It's okay, not everyone looks for linearity, some like a lot of bass, and in that case if you have a speaker with a 0.5 QTS, it's better to make a ported enclosure than a sealed one. But anyway, the conclusion is that for a base reflex enclosure, the recommended QTS is between 0.1 and 0.4. When it comes to the infinite baffle, it's like having a very large sealed box, so QTS is equal to QTC. In this case, the idea speaker for an infinite baffle will have a QTS of 0.7. 
However, going up to QTS of 1 is still fine. So for infinite baffle, the recommended QTS is between 0.7 and 1. Now let's draw the conclusion. Some people like to decide for which enclosure a speaker is suited for by using the EBP, efficiency bandwidth product, where they divide FS by QES, and if the result fits into a certain interval, then a specific type of enclosure is in order. However, I find that, that these QTS brackets work well, if not better than this method, and it's very easy to do. So, QTS between 0.1 and 0.4, go for bass reflex. QTS between 0.4 and 0.7, go for sealed. And QTS between 0.7 and 1, go for infinite baffle. This doesn't mean that you are forced to one type of speaker box if you fall into a specific bracket. Rather, these QTS intervals are recommendations. So, in conclusion, if you know the driver's QTS, you know what enclosure type you should choose for it. So that is basically it. Hope I cleared things up and I will see you in the next video. Peace.